to not vote for this motion and to replace it with a motion to support their application. So we have to go to two processes. Yeah, unfortunately we do. Yeah. So we, we simply need to vote on that, vote it down, and then, and then um, uh, have a new motion. Mr. Aguilar? Yeah, uh, one of the reasons that I'm uh, in support of this is uh, a situation that happened with a market called G and R Market, which is located um, by, is it, is it Pasadena, by Pollo Loco on Broadway? I forgot the name of the cross street. But anyhow, it's further down the street by the Siete Mares. Uh, this was a liquor store that used to belong to East Los Angeles. And because of the Esteban Torres eminent domain process, they were relocated to Lincoln Heights. They came to Lincoln Heights trying to get, to reestablish a, a, a liquor store, and they were prevented from doing so. And uh, eventually they had to sell out the business. And, uh, you know, they, 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 you know, the problem that I got is this. You know, when you, uh, when you set precedents, you need to follow the precedents that you're setting. And one of the precedents that you're setting is uh, not to saturate the community with uh, liquor licenses. And I think that's the correct precedence that we should follow. I think the community um, would like to have less liquor licenses due to the nuisance issues. And I believe that uh, Hollenbeck Police Station has always taken a position against uh, opening new liquor stores. So um, I'm just saying that we need to just uh, be fair to uh, the businesses. And, uh, you know, G GNR didn't have a liquor license. They weren't able to conduct their business. And, you know, I'm just saying uh, that's the precedent that was set. I know for a fact uh, this community spoke out against that liquor license. And so I think we should just be fair. <clears throat> uh, yes, I spoke out against that, and the reason that I did is that that store was not an asset to the community. It was a very poorly maintained. It had stuff in the windows. He didn't keep it clean, and then he wanted to come in and get a liquor license. Now, uh, Frank and I both went down and opposed it at the city council, and yes, he had to sell. This is a totally different situation, and I, I would like to reiterate that the bottom line is whether they are an asset to the community, and this store is. Um, you have another franchise, Main and Broadway. I mean, Main and uh, Daily. I haven't heard a lot of uh, support in terms of their actual support of the community. As have you shown that to be there? I've heard tons of what this particular franchise. I mean, area. That serves my area, actually. I mean, that's. Okay. And adjacent to my area. And, uh, Have they been out I there? I think we're big fans of it where I live, so just to say. No, but I, I just. Supporting yeah. this. But say within my district, I, every time I go, there's about three brewery yeah. people in there, so. Right. What I want to know is that franchisee has been doing the same equivalent amount of fundraising in the community, donating, being a participant, et cetera, et cetera, for the same 
All of our franchisees are held to the business plan that they wrote when they came up, became a franchise of South Carolina. I can't speak directly of their support in the community today. Um, if you guys would like me to get research on that, I would love to. Um, I came prepared today to talk about our local store in Broadway and Eastlake, which is in a different area of Lincoln Heights. I apologize for not being prepared for that information. And Mr. Wada, as a community relations consultant, wherever they go, they believe in philanthropy, or good corporate <coughs> they do it over and over again. In different ways, based on how the community council and the local neighborhood based organization advise them to, they do give. I can answer that question. Um, they have actually at the Main Street location and daily donated thousands upon thousands of bottles of waters and um, different kinds of beverages for the Lincoln Heights Christmas Parade, which gets about um, the last count was over 5,000 spectators every year, plus the participants. I have an answer to this man here about the JR. I supported the JR liquor store. But at the same time, it's not the same as the, the 7-Eleven because they were asking for an ABC license through the state. This one, they're buying it from someone else, which is totally a different issue. Right. Now, um, across our division, beer and wine sales amount to 14% of our total sales. And so classifying 7-Eleven as a liquor store, a vice convenience store, a small food store, um, I just would like to make it... Uh, distinguish those two. 7-Eleven is a small grocery store and sells a small percentage of beer and wine and the associated purchases with beer and wine are looking what we're trying to what we're trying to basically acquire and establish today. Right. We're rapidly running out of time to yeah. yeah. more uh, relevant uh, questions. Speaker, <laughs> <laughs> I know I have one. <coughs> Thank you. I guess the speaker. I see knee-jerk reaction. Liquor license come in, oppose it. But I think you're kind of ignoring that we're on a sinking ship economy-wise. We're in a depression, not a recession, a depression. And we're recovering, but you look at the paper and we're not. I don't see killing a business to be positive. And that's as simple as it gets. Is there any further discussion? There's a speaker card, right? Yeah, yeah. speaker cards. Oh, that's a question. Well, uh, no, that's it. No, we're gonna take public comment. And, and, and Ruth spoke, and so do you, Yuma, right? So there were there. No, I have not spoken. You have not spoken. All right. Wow, he's talking all day. Who is he? In a democracy, everybody gets to speak. And sometimes <coughs> we're bamboozled in this community. We are because we don't study issues. We just kind of go ahead because somebody gives us some money. I can tell you of all the different people that we bought when I used to work for the beer companies, all the different organizations that we bought. I carry $10,000 checks in my pocket. But what has happened to the community? Okay? I, I agree with you that the way the 7-Eleven is right now, it's an asset. But then I also say to myself, somebody is responsible to make them believe that they could actually exist in this community <coughs> as a mom and pop store without the liquor license. And I hold 7-Eleven responsible for that. Not them. 7-Eleven. Because we had the research in 1978 when I worked for the beer companies that you could not exist as a mom and pop store without that by beer and wine license, I'm sure 7-Eleven did too. They bamboozled you, and they're trying to bamboozle us now. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? I'd like, to say, I'd like to say something. Go ahead. Okay, you saying that uh, your daily revenues are $1,900 a day? I'm saying the daily sales in the store are average. <laughs> What's your net? What's your net? I don't have that information. Okay, $1,900. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know what other business in Lincoln Heights is making that kind of money. Okay, the average gross profit at the store, uh, 
right now is about 41%. So if you want to do some math with me real quick, we can go through it. They actually split the gross profit, so 41%. Don't take the numbers. Okay, 40, Don't take the numbers. You're trying to trick people to do that's your job. I can ask no, it's, it's that not question. Go ahead. I can ask you know what, Jack? Jack, tell me what you're making. If anybody has a problem, you can come to my store. I can show you my financial. We are losing money since we opened the store. I already lost more than $15,000. That's we are filing tax. That's nothing. That's it's not a my mom and pop store. They don't pay tax. They, but we pay tax, and we have all the paperwork. If if you guys want to see it, come to my store. I'll show you. We are losing money since uh, since we opened the store. Plus, you cannot compare this store, Seven Eleven store, with the mom and pop store. I want to ask you if you have a choice. Nice and clean store where you can feel like you can go anytime. You feel safe. You want to go there or you want to go to the liquor store? They have all the window covered with the poster. I, I don't want to go myself. Okay, it's safe right now because there's no liquor. But I, uh, another question is Are you violating the city ordinance prohibiting the sale of alcohol within 500 feet of school, religious institutions? Or did you grant to get a variance for that? I believe that'll be a part of the CEP application. Oh, so that's another step, huh? Because you know you got Lincoln no, High School, you got Gates, you got Little Flower, you got the Kwan Young Vietnamese Buddhist Temple right across the street, and then you got the the, the, the Chinese Fellowship Association with 250 students every every week in there. You got approximately 4,000 kids in the local area. But we're not the yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a variance. This is a city ordinance. That's in okay. <laughs> I just want to say something if to the whole community. There is some gas station. Police officer is here. There is a gas station. They are not far from the my store. They are selling a legal cigarette out of the state, and they are selling. They are selling. They are selling beer after hours. Their store not far from my store. But you cannot compare That's several other people. That's great. Well, some stores. Okay. We are not here to do anything illegal. We are here to do legal stuff. You didn't answer my question. And we need to work on that because we have to stop right. that illegal okay. okay. and illegal okay. 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 facts. I'm not qualified to answer that. I think it is. I think it's better to do it. Time has expired. Good. Okay. But I haven't talked. Everybody's been talking. I asked a question, and you can't you can't burn my time on that. What was his? Our time. There's a motion on the floor. Motion on the floor. Huh? You grew up in the Yes. How many years have you been in Kenai? About 36 years. Okay. Two years ago. Tell me how was that beast like that two years ago? I think you're out of order, sir. Okay. At this point, there's a motion on the floor. And a second, Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council opposes the granting of any kind of alcohol license for the 7-Eleven in East Lincoln Broadway. Okay, all in favor, please raise your hand. One. Okay. All opposed? Ten. All abstentions? Motion failed. I move that we, um, I move that the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council approve the application uh, of the granting of It has to be Brown acted, seven seventy two act. It's out of order. And, and I would request it to go through the planning committee again. Okay. Exactly what it's saying. Yeah. It's gotta go back to planning. Planning committee. Wait a minute, we can do no you can't. No. That's Planning that's committee. Anyway. The fact that this is on the agenda should agendize that as an item open for discussion. No, it doesn't. That's a good no. Because the public has not been uh, notified. Really notified of that. Well, they've been notified of the subject. And the motion is the public is notified. Yes, 72 hour Brown Act. If you want to do a special meeting? Try it. No. Okay. Moving on. Next. Motion to send a letter to the Daylight Stores corporate office regarding the window display. 